Hey there, Dr. Jason McCammon with Elite Health, Naturopathic and Functional Medicine here. And I wanna to talk to you about mold toxicity. Now, before you're like, hey, I don't have mold, well, hold on a second. Um, have you really investigated the, the common symptoms that mold is associated with? It's very common. In fact, I find almost every patient that I do exams on has some level of mold, some more than others. So uh, make sure you're really aware of that. So uh, hopefully this video serves as a kind of a little bit of a nudge or wake up call to let's first check out Maybe I have some of these symptoms. Have I had a holistic doc or functional medicine doc, you know, do a good workup and see if I have mold because uh, it is a massively underdiagnosed problem out there. Okay, so let's get into that. So a good illustration is a recent, uh, recent case we have here at um, Elite Health in our clinic with a, a gentleman who complained of massive brain fog. So again, big time mold uh, symptom there. Restless leg syndrome, which again is kind of generic. A lot of doctors are like, ah, just take this medication, right? It's whatever. Uh, a lot of that RLS guys, a lot of that restless leg stuff is the mycotoxins, which is the toxins produced by the fungal colonies that are um, causing uh, a mast cell activation problem in your body and histamine and cytokines and all this other stuff are irritating the nerves in the leg. Could also be mineral deficiency, sometimes both. Um, gas and bloating in the belly. Uh, night sweats in, in his particular case because of the hormone impact of the mycotoxins in the body and he had some just achy upper back pain and no injuries there he, he's pretty pretty good shape you know worked out and i mean there's really no reason for him to have this pain um, and also headaches uh several a week you know which is kind of a lot you know there's something's going on there um and you know i checked out his spinal alignment looked to be pretty decent actually so sh that's not a problem and then uh, libido took a took a dive as well um and then Generalized anxiety, he just was getting more anxious for no apparent reason. So there's many more mold symptoms. However, if you're dealing with any of those, I'm not saying you have mold toxic illness, but let's rule that out, right? You gotta really, um, you know, again, this should be a nudge to you to say, hey, maybe I should ask my provider about that. If your provider is not mold informed, if they just blow you off immediately, um, they're not mold informed or they don't care. Let's find someone that can actually do a workup on you. and. You know, if it's not a problem, great, move on to the next thing and keep investigating if you have health problems. But I'm telling you, mold is a, is a huge culprit out there, okay? So um, in his case, we do this, you know, really comprehensive exam, looking at everything, all parts of his lifestyle, you know, sleep, um, you know, exercise, looking at nutrition, obviously supplementation is big, deficiency is big. And of course, getting internal with uh, kidney function, liver function, you know, do we have bowel infections? Just look at the entire landscape. We're not gonna just say, hey, this sounds like mold and start doing antifungals. Big mistake, you gotta look at the entire landscape. A lot of patients that come here have mold toxic uh, illness um, or suffering from mold toxicity, and it's months before we can actually start a treatment plan for the actual fungal colonies. Why their body is not prepared for that level of um, oxidation that we have to do. Remember when you go kill something, it sounds like, yeah, I, I wanna kill that, get out of my body, it sounds like a good idea, and has its place, but remember, that's oxidative stress. You have to be able to the body has to be able to handle that oxidative stress, that killing of that organism, and our drainage pathways have to be open and have to be continuously open. You can't just do, you know, one lymphatic massage and a, like a some NAC or milk thistle for the liver and like, hey, I'm, I'm, my drainage pathways are good. No, they're not actually. You have to continuously have a program. And remember, everybody is unique. So some folks need more lymphatics. Some people need more kidney support. You have to figure out your ecosystem. That's why like a generic protocol you might see for mold. Not a good idea, I don't recommend those. You gotta find a provider, again, educated in mold toxic, not mold toxins and mold illness and understand how to deal with this, okay? So um, we clearly addressed the underlying, um, you know, terrain of his body, made sure we had nutrient sufficiency, you know, um, had filled up some gaps in, in the nutrients that he was uh, experiencing there. You know, most of us are deficient, severely deficient in minerals, so we had to replete those. And then again, we went about basically just preparing the body to be able to eventually dump the mold out of the body. Now, guess what? We didn't even start treating the mold directly and he already had some significant improvement in symptoms. We were just detoxing his body. So it was already going really well within a couple months. So that was big. And that gives, gives patients hope. That doesn't always happen. Some patients, um, I talked in a different video, they're in a cell danger response mode, which is kind of more rare out there, but that does happen where no matter what we do, the body is so um, you know, suppressed with the immune system and making energy, it's just gonna stay stuck until we shift it out of that gear. But anyway, he, he responded really favorably after a couple months. Um, and then now is reporting almost complete remission of every symptom I just listed earlier in the video is almost completely gone. So it's really exciting, really happy for him. And I do have to point out, 
He was very motivated to get this accomplished. He had already been you know, frustrated by years going to see conventional providers to get nowhere. And again, some things were getting worse. He was about to have a, um, you know, uh, sorry, he was about to expand his family with the, with the new one, with the little one. So it's like, hey, we got to get this figured out. And so, you know, frustrated, led, but led him to motivation. So I want you guys to remind, uh, to remind you guys, take your frustration and take, you know, like, like this, er, why can't I figure this out and move it into motivation. And again, look for a provider that can connect with you that you feel it really is listening and going to do a, a full workup and see what's going on. Okay, really important. Uh, so anyway, when we started actually treating the mold, uh, things got even better and kept improving. And again, most things are in remission right now. And then what we want to do, though, is look at, again, all the possible things that can impact this patient, not just in his body, but his environment. So what do we look at? We even started asking him about his home. And that didn't come up earlier. It just didn't seem to be something that we need to get into. However, it came up that, hey, I was down in the basement. And I smelled something a little bit musty and I have noticed a little bit of mold in the corner. OK, I was like, oh, let's talk about that. Right. Let's expand on that, which, again, very few providers are going to ask that and talk about your environment. It's really important. It doesn't take much mold, guys. In fact, you don't even have to see a mold colony for they have to, for your home to have beans and beans of spores floating around that could be making you sick. Now, there's a difference between uh, like spore exposure and, and breathing it in, which we do almost everywhere as part of our environment and being colonized. OK, we can go into this in another video. But colonization means you had quite large exposure to the spores, which again should be taken care of by our liver. About 25% of the population though in the US cannot detox the, the, the spores. Even if it's a light amount of spores, mold spores in the air, they can't detox them very well. And so you start to get colonized over several years. I've seen this happen, you know, when I trace it back with patients, you know, through like um, adolescence and maybe through like college or something. And then that colony stays with you. Even if you have a, a clean residence and clean environment, it stays with you. So you actually, actually have to go and obviously eradicate the colony, which can take a lot of work. It's t typically protecting itself in a, in a biofilm. There's a very, very robust uh, protein-like filament around it, and we have to break that down, and then we've got to get medicines in there. So anyway, as we started to address this, um, again, symptoms continue to improve, um, you know, more energy, no brain 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 fog at all the, the gut was healing a lot less gas in there and he really didn't report a lot of gi issues but what happens is your your normal right is maybe a little stomach upset a little bloating a little gas and you just think ah that's just me and then when that goes away you're like oh wait a minute that normal wasn't so good right so you have, you have that that happens too which is kind of cool these breakthroughs that people didn't realize were a problem you know we get that a lot around here it's pretty cool so anyway um we're heading in a great direction with him we still got work to do um but we are going to start talking about the intervention to go ahead and clean up that basement. And it's not a, again, a, lot, a lot of mold, okay? I wanna circle back to that. It's just enough that kept the spores circulating in his home. So while we were eradicating them in his body, he was definitely breathing some in um, enough to kind of keep some cycles going. So we're gonna work on you know, mitigation, you know, make sure we do it smart. You, you gotta be careful. You can't just go down there and start blasting bleach everywhere. It does take an approach. You, have to, you should work with a provider that knows how to take care of that or with a company that can do uh, mold mitigation appropriately. Okay, so just another story about um, really asking questions of your provider. Hey, should I be looking into mold toxic illness? I highly recommend looking at what's called a mycotoxin panel. That gives us a lot of information about what types of species could your, be in your body and, and how, how what level they have. And if your provider is not schooled in that, not um, you know, not mold literate, we want to find one that is. Okay, so we can take care of you. All right, so hopefully that helped you out today. Keep looking into if mold toxicity is an issue for you. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.